On Monday, The New York Times reported that former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton never used her official State Department email address for her official communications. Instead, she utilized a private email account, effectively protecting her emails from public scrutiny. The Washington Post then broke the news that Hillary had registered her email address the same day her confirmation hearings for Secretary of State began. In other words, Hillary knew she would be Secretary of State conducting official business, and coincidentally opened a private email account at the same time to guard her from Freedom of Information Act requests. Sure, Hillary Clinton has a nasty history with crucial documents going missing, she is the only First Lady in American history fingerprinted by the FBI, and the FBI found missing documents with her fingerprints on them in the White House personal quarters. But the media super friends quickly activated to protect Hillary. Glenn Thrush of Politico tweeted that Hillary must have relied on incompetent staffers and lawyers. Of course, the media also ignored Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Qatar, and Oman handing millions to the Clinton charity just before Hillary's big run. The public and private spheres have now been completely reversed. The federal government can punish its own employees for enforcing federal immigration law. If you oppose this, you are a racist, but if you hire an illegal immigrant, you will be fined or imprisoned. The feds can monitor your electronic metadata, but they can hide their own correspondence from records requests. After all, they are our betters, and we must kneel before them. What possible violations of the constitutional system will Americans actually fight? The list of possibilities grows short. Democracies die not with a whimper or a bang but with a shrug. When we don't care enough about the system to stop its breakdown, when we're happy with our dictators so long as we agree with them, the constitutional order collapses.